Hey, Robert Medlin here. You know, I want to just uh, today encourage you to, to stay focused on the main thing. And uh, the Bible is wonderful. I love every page of the Bible. Uh, there's something that can encourage us and, and give us insight and understanding in every page uh, and, and in every part of the Bible. But uh, the main thing is for us to, to focus, first of all, uh, everything everything that we that we understand from the Bible has to come from the cross. It has to come from Jesus. So Jesus has to be our primary focus. And so there's lots of of uh, teachings around, you know, that, that kind of focus on the flesh, you know, and getting control of the flesh and and uh, and and to 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 kind of reform and to be more like Jesus and and. Um, and it's good to maintain self-control. Self-control is good. But everything starts with our focus on Jesus. And in John 3, 6, even John 3, 16, you know, the number one scripture about salvation, if, you, if you're if you ever concerned about whether you're saved or not, just read John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And so that's a promise from God. God, if, if, if God could violate that promise... Uh, it would be impossible for him because he'd be lying if he did. So he said, if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, for God so loved the world, he gave Jesus his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe in Jesus, you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. For Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Those who believe are not condemned. You can just say that to yourself. I believe and I'm not condemned. You will not be condemned if you believe in Jesus. And so, uh, that that's a starting point for everything that we that we study in the Bible and and uh, everything that we try to do as a Christian has to start with Jesus. And and even John three sixteen starts with John three fourteen. In John three fourteen, it says that just like Moses was lifted up the serpent in the in the wilderness, even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Jesus has to be lifted up that those who look to Him would have eternal life, would not perish, but have everturn, everlasting life. And what happened there in the in the wilderness is the Israelites were sinning and they got bit by serpents and they were dying and they cried out to Moses and Moses cried out to God and God had Moses uh, make a golden serpent, a brass serpent and put it on, a brass serpent and put it on a pole. So all the Israelites had to do to be delivered from the poisonous bite of the serpent was to look at this serpent on the on the pole and so jesus said just like that i've got to i've got to go to the cross i've got to give my life for you on the cross i've got to give uh i've got to pay for your sins on the cross and so if you'll just keep your eyes on me then you will not perish you will have everlasting life and you'll go to heaven and so that's the first thing that we have to remember and have to keep our eyes on and then if we can if we can really get a grasp of that 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 we're saved by faith in jesus then all the other scriptures make sense. You know, it's kind of like uh, when you have a, you know, the scriptures talk about us being adopted as children of Jesus and that he has adopted us. He has already adopted us. And so uh, when you accepted Jesus, you were adopted. A lot of wonderful things happened to you. You received eternal life. You were saved. Uh, he came to dwell inside of you. Uh, you were born again. All kinds of wonderful things happened to you when you accepted Jesus. And you can just find out more about those things and what that means to you. And uh, so that's what we can do. That's what we, when we're, when we're reading the Bible and it's great power for us and he answers our prayers and he does miracles for us. And so those things come as a result of, of accepting Jesus, that he died on the cross for us, for our sins, and that he is the Son of God and he is the Lord. So everything starts right there. And so that's that's our foundation. And so from that foundation, nothing can shake you off that foundation. Jesus is the rock, and you're building your house on the rock, and it's not gonna it's not gonna fall if you just if that's the main thing that you're focused on. Now if you start focusing on the flesh and and you know uh, disciplining the flesh and, and doing all those things, if you do that and get your eyes off of Jesus, then you're gonna fail because you're relying on something that can't God's already judged your your flesh and said it's dead. God had to pronounce it dead. So so your flesh is dead. Your flesh can't save you. So so the the secret to living a a victorious, powerful life full of the knowledge of of Jesus and that we're righteous and holy and blameless in his sight and, and that we're 
we're born again and that we're a new creation and we're brand new creatures. We're new creatures because Jesus is living in us by his spirit. And he doesn't just come and go. He's come and made his dwelling in us. He's adopted us as his children. He's come and made his dwelling in us. He's not going to go anywhere. And so he's there to help you uh, succeed in life and to reap the benefits of, of what he's done for us. And so uh, the way that we're transformed is that we keep our eyes on Jesus and fix our eyes on Jesus. Not Don't, don't fix your eyes on yourself. <laughs> Too many people fix their eyes on somebody else. What about them? Are they going to go to heaven? What about them? Too many people fix their eyes on somebody else. But, but the Lord wants us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And, and it, we keep our eyes on him. That what happens is that transforms us to be more like him. We keep our eyes on him. Keeping our eyes on him transforms us to be like him. And so no matter how much reforming you do of the flesh, uh, what you really want is you want Jesus to live his life through you. You want Jesus who's dwelling in you to express himself through you, to speak through you, to act through you, to uh, to encourage other people through you, to love other people through you. That's what you want is you want Jesus to do that, those things through you. And the way you do that is you keep your eyes on Jesus. You get your eyes on Jesus and what he's done for us on the cross. And get your eyes and keep your eyes on Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you've done all these wonderful things for me. You're living inside of me. I'm safe. Uh, no, nobody can snatch me out of your hands. And so getting our eyes on Jesus and keeping them there uh, because the devil wants to always point out something, you know, some kind of a flaw you've got. Well, you know, just like your children, you have children and uh, they're not perfect. If, if you've got children that are perfect, uh, you need to let us know about it because uh, that would be very, un very unusual. But uh, just like our children, our children, uh, they do things that are not right. Sometimes they do wonderful things and we're just rejoice about that. At other times, we're, we spend a lot of time in, in disciplining them and coaching them and helping them and, and uh, correcting them and restraining them and, and, uh, and all those things. But that doesn't mean they're not our kids. We love them. We love them. Nothing changes our love for our kids. And so, uh, but, we, but we work to help them have a good life. And so uh, we don't want our kids running around saying, you know, I don't, I don't believe my parents love me. I don't, you know, they, I'm, they're going to disown me. You know, I'm, I, I'm not going I'm, I'm fatherless. I'm motherless because they're going to disown me. No, <laughs> wouldn't that be terrible? But, uh, you know, our, our natural, we are not going to disown our children. And God's not going to disown you. He's become one with you. He's part of you. He's in you. And just like you, you're in your, you're in your children. Uh, you're, they're part of you. They came from you. And so you're not going to disown your kids. And so, but you want to help them have a good life. And that's what the Lord wants to do with us too. So put everything in proper perspective. There's wonderful scriptures uh, that will help you build your faith. Uh, and faith in the promises. He's given us all these promises that that they've applied to every area of our life that we can stand in faith on those promises and that's what he's called us to do and that's what he'll help us to do is to find those promises that apply to us that that'll be the greatest blessing in our life so he can do them for us isn't it a joy to do wonderful things for your kids to help them and then to see them uh and, and then to do the wonderful things and then then cheer them on <laughs> that's what the lord does for us uh, but we 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 have to remember that, that everything comes from him. We're nothing. We died. Jesus is in us. He's expressing himself through us. And that's what that's what will give you victory in life. That's what will give you a wonderful, good life. The instant you get your eyes back on the flesh, the instant you get your eyes back on somebody else's flesh, then you're going to start sinking. And you'll be like the Israelites crying out, you know, Lord, help, help us, save us. The serpents are biting us. <laughs> so we just get our eyes back on Jesus on the cross. The serpent on the pole. We get our eyes. Jesus became a curse for us uh, when he hung on the cross. He became a per curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham might come to us through Christ Jesus. So that all the promises of God are yes in Christ. And so that's what that's the life that God intends us for intends for us to live. Enjoy the Word of God. Enjoy the Bible. But first of all, uh, just see yourself rooted in Jesus. See your Jesus in you. See Jesus paying for you on the cross. 
See Jesus as your life. He paid for you. He is your life. The Bible says that you died and, and, your, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And so when Christ, who is your life, appears, you'll appear with him in glory. So you died and Jesus is your life now. Just rejoice in that. Think about that. Think about Jesus in you doing stuff. And if you see somebody that's just struggling, well, what would Jesus do? He would just help them up and lift them up and say, come on, let's go. Uh, he, wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't condemn them. And so, and we're not going to be condemning anybody else. We're going to be encouragers, encouraging people that Jesus loves them, encouraging people to get their eyes on the cross, encouraging people to keep their eyes on Jesus and what he's done for us and all the wonderful, wonderful things he's done for us. Uh, he's, he's, he's dwelling in us by his spirit. He's, we've been born again. We've been regenerated. We've been saved. We're going to heaven. And in fact, God says we're already seated with Jesus in heaven. So all those wonderful things we can focus on and get our eyes off of, off of the flesh. And that'll keep us, uh, that'll give us a good life. That'll give us, uh, that'll give us a wonderful life. And uh, people that are judgmental of other Christians and other people are not just other Christians, but other people, people that are judgmental, they're not having a good life. They're having a miserable life. And the reason they're having a miserable life is they got their eyes off of Jesus. They're vulnerable to every demonic attack because they got their eyes off of Jesus. And so uh, stop judging, stop looking, and stop criticizing. Get your eyes on Jesus and how much he loves you. And once you understand how much he loves you, then you'll understand how much he loves them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God didn't send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Those who believe are not condemned, but those who don't believe are condemned already. They're already condemned because they haven't believed in the name of the Son of God. So our job is to preach the gospel to them and tell them Jesus paid for them on the cross. Get their eyes on Jesus. He paid for them. Believe in him. Receive eternal life and go to heaven. <laughs> well, God bless you. and Have a wonderful... We're approaching Thanksgiving when I'm making this video. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Have a blessed Thanksgiving. And let's just really spend our time thanking Jesus for all he's done for us. Amen. Amen. God bless you.